Now, can you install a brand new condensing boiler on a gas supply using 50mm copper pipe? Well, with the aid of BS6891, the regulations and a practical demonstration, in this video we're going to find out whether we can or we can't install a brand new condensing boiler on a 50mm gas pipe. Because there are a few gas engineers out there who are telling me that they can install a new gas boiler on a 50mm gas pipe. Anyway, let's get on with it and find out whether we can or we can't. Now, this is the installation we're going to use to prove whether we can or we can't do this task of installing gas boilers on 50mm gas pipe. Now, the two boilers I've got behind me are, this is a 24 kilowatt and this is a 30 kilowatt but there'll be a few of you out there going oh you don't have two boilers on the same gas line well you could have a cooker and two fires that could be over 24 kilowatt but that's what we're going to be using now this installation is incredibly short and you probably wouldn't get this length of pipe work in a domestic property unless it was in a garage or something like that but this is what we've got to prove whether we can or we can't. So we've got a gas meter here, the gas pipe runs along here, so we've got two 22 milli elbows. The gas pipe then runs down to a 90 degree bend. We've then got a T, 22 milli equal T, where it then splits off into this boiler first. Then if we look here, it then comes along the bottom in 22, we've got a 22 milli elbow, then it comes underneath the boiler, reduces into 15 and then into this 30 kilowatt boiler. So that's the gas pipe we're dealing with to prove whether we can or we can't. Now let's uh, work all this out on the board to see what size pipe we do need to feed these two boilers. So you can see here I've done a drawing. So we've got our first pipe A to B goes to the T and then B to C to the 24 kilowatt, and then B to D to the 30 kilowatt boiler. Now the first stretch of pipe coming from the meter to the first elbow is 200 mil. Then this piece coming down here to this bend here is 1.4 meters. Then from the center of the bend to the center of the T is 0.45 meters. And then 0.9 uh, meters, and then from B to the center of the pipe there is 0.9, and from there, to the top going into the boiler, again is 0.9 meters. So that's the drawing we're working off. So on the chart here, we've got the actual pipe section, so A to B, B to C, and all the rest of it. Then we've got the pipe lengths, what the actual pipe lengths are, what the allowances are for fittings. Then those two added together would be our effective length. Then we've got our meters cubed an hour, what we're actually feeding. Then we've got our pipe sizing, what we're going to guess at. Then we're going to look at the charts from the British standards. Um, so our millibar drop. And then we've got our pressure loss, which is what we've got here in our effective times by what we've got in our millibar drop and gives us a total. Now, if you've seen my video on pipe sizing, you'll know how to do this, but we're just going to prove a point now using actual lengths we've got. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we can feed these two boilers using 50 millimeter pipe. And we're gonna do our A to B section first. So the first section of pipe is A to B. Now, if we add up 0.2 meters plus 1.4 meters plus 0.45 meters, that comes to 2.05 meters. Now, the next thing we need to do is look at this chart here for our allowance for fittings. Now we've got two elbows here, so two 15 millimeter elbows, so two times 0.8, and we've got one 15 millimeter bend, which is one times 0.2. Then we've got one T here, which is one times 1.2. And if you add all them together, it comes out at 2.2 meters. Now our effective length is our actual pipe length added together to this one so we would have 4.25 meters in that one. Now our next one is our meters cubed an hour so that's our added kilowatts 
which is 54 kilowatts times 0.095, which comes to 5.13 meters cubed an hour. Now our pipe size we said is 15 millimeters. So now we need this chart from the British standards to be able to find out what our millibar drop is. So we need to look down this column here for 5.13 meters cubed an hour. And then we need to look across to 15 millipipe. And guess what? Can't be done. So uh -uh. that pipe cannot be installed. This cannot be installed in 15 millimeter pipe. So shall we look and see whether we can just feed this section in fit, let's forget that for now, but let's see if we can feed this 24 kilowatt boiler in 15 mil pipe. Bearing in mind, this is a very short run. And there are guys out there who are saying we can install them on 15 mil pipe. So let's have a look at that one. Now we're going from the meter to the 24 kilowatt boiler now. So this B is now here, not, so it's still A to B. So it's one continuous pipe from the meter up to the boiler because we're ignoring that part. So A to B, go into the boiler. It's now, if you add all those sections together, it comes to 2.95 meters. Now we've got one, two, three, four elbows. So that comes out at 1.6, plus the bend, which is 0.2, gives us a total from there to there of 1.8 meters. Add that to the 2.95 gives us 4.75 meters. Now if we take the 24, we times it by 0.095, gives us 2.28 meters cubed an hour. We've guessed at 50 mil, so we need to look at the big chart now. If we look down the chart, the closest we can get to the 2.28 meters cubed, and we go across, and it comes out at 0.3353. So we take that figure, we times it by the 4.75, gives us a millibar drop of 1.592675. So that means we're over one and a half millibar drop. So just that incredible short piece of pipe feeding that 24 kilowatt boiler, we cannot do it in 50 millimeter pipe. So for you guys out there who are going, yes, you can run it in 15 mil because it's so short. Because remember, it's less than three meters long that. No, you cannot because of the elbows and the bends. It makes the length longer, so you cannot do that. So one thing to remember, one straight length of 15 millimeter tube, so three meters of it, with a one millibar difference between the start of one end and the other end will allow you to run 2.9 meters cubed an hour. But as soon as you start putting elbows and bends on there, gone. So hopefully that has proved that you cannot run a new condensing boiler on 15 millimeter pipe unless you've got an equivalent length of less than three meters which is going to be pretty hard to find when it with such a small distance so hopefully that has proved you cannot install a new condensing combi boiler or any boiler really on 15 millimeter pipe because it just won't give you the pressures now what I'm going to do now is, this is the installation we've got upstairs with the pipes we've got feeding those boilers. I'm going to see first of all what we're going to do the pipe sizing to see if it works. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see what pressures we get with these two boilers when they're working to see what readings it actually does give us in real life when we're running these boilers. So let's get on with that then. Now. Remember, this is all in 22 mil by these two fittings, and this is what we've got upstairs. So we're going to start with A to B, which goes to the T. Once we've counted the T, we don't count it again. So A to B, that added all up comes to 2.05 meters. We have one, two elbows, one bend, and one T. 
which gives you equivalent length of 3.3 meters. And that and that together gives us 5.35 meters. Now, the meters cubed an hour is all the kilowatts because that's going to feed both boilers. So 54 kilowatts times 0.095 is 5.13 meters cubed. We've got 22 mil pipe. So we look down the chart for the closest we've got over 5.13 meters cubed. We look across the 22 mil pipe. You can see it says 0.1996. Now what we've got to do is take our effective length of 5.35 times it by our drop gives us a total pressure loss of 1.06786 so in this situation we've got upstairs that pipe in 22 mil isn't big enough to feed those two appliances because we're over a 1 millibar drop Anyway, that's what we've got. Let's continue now with our B to C pipe. Now, B to C, you can just see has only got one elbow because we're not counting the T, we've already done that. So it is 0.9 meters long. We've got the one 15 millimeter elbow, which is 0.6. Add those two together, gives us equivalent length of 1.5 meters. Remember, this is 22 mil. So we're only now interested in the 24 kilowatt boiler times 0.095 because that piece of pipe is only feeding that boiler. Gives us 2.28 meters cubed an hour. Like I said, that is 22 mil, as you've seen upstairs. If we look down on the big chart, we look across to 2.28, or the nearest to 2.28 without going below, and you look across the 22 mil pipe, we get 0.0565. So now what we take our 1.5 meters and we times it by the 0.0565 gives us a drop of 0.08475. So less than a one millibar drop, a lot less than a one millibar drop. But what we have to do now is we have to take our figure from A to B and our figure from B to C and add them together. So A to P plus B to C gives us a pressure drop of 1.15261. So that piece of pipe being fed in 22 millimeters is still not big enough if we've got another boiler at the other end. If that was separate and we weren't counting that part in the very beginning, then yes, it's big enough, but that 22 mil pipe with that other boiler at the other end isn't big enough. We've got too big of a drop. Anyway, that's what we've got. So what we need to do now is we're gonna size B to D and see exactly what we get for that boiler. Now let's look at this uh, B to D pipe. You can see it's 1.8 meters in length. It's got one 22 mil elbow and one 15. So that's 0.4 and 0.6 is one. Add those two together, we get 2.8. We then got the 30, so 30 times 0.095 is 2.85 meters cubed an hour. We're on 22 mil pipe. So again, we get our chart. We look for 2.85 or the nearest above. Look across the 22 mil and it reads 0.0769. And again, we take our 2.8, we times it by our 0.0769, gives us a total of 0.21532. And again, we take this figure and this figure, add them together, because we need to go all the way to there and we get a pressure drop of 1.28318. So that pipe's not big enough either. So unless we increase this to 28 millimeters, this pipe will not be giving us the figures we need when we're doing our working pressure at the meter to do in our working pressure at the appliance. And that's what we're going to be doing next. So let's go back upstairs and let's see exactly what readings we get when we're using these two boilers from our working pressure at the meter 
to our working pressures at the appliances. Now this is what I've got set up. So I've got a digital manometer on the gas meter there. I've got a digital manometer on the inlet of the gas valve here. And I've got a digital manometer down here reading the inlet pressures coming into the boiler. So let's see what they read on standing pressure because they should be reading right about the same. Now let's see if these gauges are reading the same standing pressure. So that's reading 25.1. The one on the boiler inlet, 24.9, 24.8. And the one on the inlet is 25.1, 25. So they're not all a million miles away from each other. Now what I've done is I've got this boiler in maximum mode. I've got this in hot water, I've got the tap running. So let's see what readings we're getting at the uh, three manometers. So the working pressure at the meter, we've got 19.1, 19.2. At the gas valve, we've got 17.4. Down here, we've got 17. 17.9 so you can quite clearly see from those results that this pipe work is definitely undersized and this boiler keeps knocking out because this one keeps taking the gas from it for some reason but anyway hopefully that experiment shows you that you cannot install a gas boiler combination boiler on 15 millimeter gas pipe now you may be able to get away with bits of 15 mil on heat only boilers but things like system boilers and combi boilers you're going to struggle if you haven't got 22 millimeter pipes going to it now if you completely disagree with anything i've said today why don't you put it in the comments down below and if there's anything else you want me to prove on it then put it in the comments down below. Catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.